Should we go over introductions or we do that? Yeah, okay. we just normally do it okay. because we're on TV. Okay. Sure. Thomas Bukovic. Jeff Morrison. Michelle King. John Decker. Michael Keister. Sandra Jones. Robert Kelly. Great. Um, so the first on the agenda, we're going to accept the minutes from last time we were here, 916. Did everybody get a copy of the minutes from the email? <coughs> yes. All right. Okay. I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes from 916. I can second that. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. All right. Um, we did have a letter of resignation, so I'm going to go ahead and read that. Um, Dear Mrs. King, and this is from Sean Green, by the way. Dear Mrs. King, please accept this letter as my resignation from the Nottingham Budget Committee. I have completed one year of my three-year term, and I regret that I am not going to be able to complete my term. I've recently been appointed to a committee at work, which will involve frequent national travel, which conflicts with the committee's um, committee meeting schedule. The budget committee is an important responsibility in finding the balance between providing the resources that the town needs without placing a heavy tax burden on its citizens is not an easy one. I hope the committee can move forward by staying focused on meeting agendas and by treating each other with respect, regardless of disagreement. Thank you, Sean Green. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, Sean Green's resignation. I can second that with regret. All in favor of accepting the resignation letter from Sean Green? What happens if we don't? Is he forced to come yeah, back? Exactly. No, I think he'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> right. we, we cannot accept it, but he's still going to quit. <laughs> It's a formality. Right. Yeah, I know. Yep. And then Tom Lavelle is not going to be able to attend today. Right. He said he had a work commitment as well okay. tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving right along. Um, we are going to review the financials. The ones that are from school. Uh, yep, school ones. Okay. I know Carol just got here, so. <laughs> no, I know. So I guess I'll just give a school update. Uh, the business administrator has moved on to another job and we are contracting with a, another agency that will provide a contracted business administrator part-time. Um, that person will not start until October 19th. Um, she has state government experience in New Hampshire. She is not experienced with the software that we use, um, but that will hopefully be a learning curve that she can overcome. And in the meantime, uh, Superintendent Byrne is the one who is starting to load the data into the budget format so that format of the report that you have is the format of the reports that we get on a monthly basis throughout the year. The budget should look like the format of what we had last year, so they are a little different. The um, revenue and expense reports don't have the notes that the budget will have. Okay. And so I'm happy to take questions back. I can't say that I can answer everything about what's on here, but I will do my best. Um, Overall, <coughs> revenue um, was a little higher than expected. Some of it was unanticipated revenue. I believe that was from a health trust um, premium refund that we got during the year. Um, the adequate education grant came in higher than expected, um, the state grant, and the part I'm not 100% positive, but I believe the other federal sources, some of that, or maybe most of that, is the COVID grant money. There was multiple disbursements during the year. Um, so I can confirm that if anyone is interested to know. But that was 185438 I don't know if all of that was COVID related, but I think most of that was. So Carol, on the, um, the grant stuff, 
that's basically paid for the whole year already, right? That's, it's not, it's all paid like a lump sum. COVID grants? Or whatever, these. Other federal resources? Right, like the adequate education grant. I don't know if the adequate education comes in all at once, but that was through that. So this is the fiscal year report. So I don't know. Okay. Oh, this is the this is the year end report. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yep. That's correct. So yeah. although the, the dates at the top no. say yeah. Yeah. June, it's the the end of year. Right. I, uh, yeah. I forgot it was fiscal year. Yeah. So okay. if you look at the the columns, yeah, that's perfect. The GL budget is the budget amount. The range to date would be just the June amount, and then the year to date shows you what um, the full amount for the year was. Okay. All right. Uh, yep. So no, I thanks. assume adequate education comes in all at once, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I was thinking the half a year, but no. Yeah, so this is a full year. Okay. Yep. No. Perfect. Thanks. I forgot. So Carol, the second line tuition from parents. Yes. That's always like almost nothing, right? Um, <clears throat> is there anything we can do to get that up? No, the tuition from parents is. Um, most of that would be uh, teachers who actually pay tuition for kids who live out of districts to go to our school. Yeah, is so there uh, tuition from the regular parents? Mm. Yeah, I know, but I mean, is there a legal barrier to asking parents to pay tuition? Say, if they make more than three times the median income, which is like sixty something thousand, so that'd be like one hundred and eighty thousand in income. Would it be legally possible to ask them to pay tuition? Not like that. I don't think so, but you can research that if you want. Would the uh, school board be receptive to trying that out? You mean K through 8 or high school? Both. Uh, no, I do not think that they would be receptive to charging no. tuition for K through 8. I, I don't think you can do that anyway. No. It's Previously a got a legal opinion that it was not legal to charge tuition for one high school and not the other. That was prior to my service. Because it's a public tax-supported school, well, right? Yeah, it was. It was set up differently, where Dover was the school of record and Co Brown was a optional, optional school, so they charged tuition for the difference in Co Brown. Right. But then they but that when out. they became when they made it a second school of record, right. they couldn't do that anymore. And that was something that was passed by the voters. Yeah, I, I remember it. I mean, it's it's kind of a it's 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 in the idea of you know we don't give food stamps to everybody. You know, we only give them to the people that are in need. Um, and perhaps maybe we could ask, even if we can't legally enforce them to pay it, but maybe we could ask parents that are in these super high income brackets, because I've looked at the IRS data for Nottingham and there's quite a few families that make a lot of money um, and maybe we could ask them to pay tuition for their kids and that could take some of the burden off the taxpayers so that's something that could be explored so the, um, any questions on the revenue um, on the expenses um, I can try to go through the detail briefly again it's not broken into the subcategories the way that the budget is normally organized, or it is, but it's not so nicely summarized for us. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, if you drop down to the bottom of the first page of the expense report, it does have a the function, regular education total, and there's some totals there. Um, Carol, the, the thing at the very end of these lines is say percent budget. How do we read that? Um, I'm assuming where it says budget balance, um, that percent is what percent of the budget balance that column reflects. So the budget, so first line teacher salaries, there's 47,998, that's what the budget balance is, and I assume that would be 2.22% of the overall budget for that line. I, I got a calculator. So does that mean they're within two percent of budgeted amount? So that line was two point two percent over budget. Okay. So a, a negative percentage a negative. means over budget. Okay. That's what I was going to ask too. Negative. It's over. Carol, could you tell me what page you're working with? The second page in after the revenue, or the first page since 
That's the revenue. So I skipped the uh, third one in summary in. expenditures, so I'm on the third page. Okay, thank you. So you'll see things like, uh, let's see, one, two, yeah. six lines down, lunchroom yes. monitors. We were unable to hire any last year, mostly um, due to COVID. And so that line was not expended. So that one was 100% under budget. <laughs> Why is classroom textbooks almost three times over budget? Isn't that something that's paid for out of the unassigned fund balance with Warren articles every year, where there's a fund that gets replenished every year in a Warren article? The classroom <coughs> textbooks or workbooks? Classroom textbooks. What line number? Um, it's a long one. Ending in 56410001. Yeah, I did towards the bottom. So I will have to ask. I don't know the specifics of what was proposed. <coughs> I'm just making, making note of it. I don't think we did any <coughs> major um, changes in <coughs> in terms of replacing mm -hmm. a whole set of textbooks. Well, it's nice to know, too, that a lot of the books are also offered online. <coughs> kids have access to internet at right. home, and it makes it easier, you know? And then if they don't, they have the actual book in front of them. Or the what's the Chromebooks, then? The kids get yeah. to certain ages, certain... At, at sixth grade, they start Okay, sixth books. grade. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's right, sixth grade. I know my daughter has a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Hey>, yeah. <laughs> Are there questions in that section? What is ESY? Extended school year um, for <coughs> students who usually are on IEPs and are eligible for services over the summer. Did you say something about contracts? being renegotiated to for the schools or for Dover coming so up the soon? the Dover contract will expire um, next June, so we will have to renegotiate that. <laughs> so there is, um, if you, are on the next page down at the bottom. This is page 17. Um, that was what page it was in the packet. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, just wanted to point out there are two lines that offset each other. So there's a special ed tuition non public elementary and a special ed tuition non public high school. Um, that one was because of a, a special ed um, placement that the student transitioned from elementary to high school mm -hmm. and it got coded um, as the wrong one um, in the budget. So those two offsides are that's why those numbers are so far off. Um, on page 16 and 17, I see that there's a duplicate of new equipment. These are like towards the bottom of the page number 5739000 and then number 5733000 are they like in their own category it's 5739 5739 and then 5739000 I see the 5739 five, page nine, nine, 16 towards the bottom, but oh, six, oh, I don't see the 3 3. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the one's on one page, one's on 16, yeah, one's, and one's on, on 16, 17. and one's on 17. Okay. Towards the bottom. So are they. So one amounts. is, the one um, 5739 is, you have to the first few numbers. It's 1100. Right. Mm -hmm. 5739, that's under reg regular education, new equipment. Yeah, okay. 1200. 1200 series is special ed. Okay. Thank so that would have been special ed, new equipment. Thank you. 
<clears throat> uh, real quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, with his health insurance, these buyouts, what does that really entail? Um, I believe those would have been people who opted out of the health insurance coverage, and if it's teachers, it may be in their uh, contract that they, by opting out, they get a, um, it's often like a 500 or a stipend or mm -hmm. something, whatever. Like a benefit. Actually, that was. Cool. I've seen that in the for, with principal. Also, I've seen it. This is a bio. So I was just curious. I was assumed, but wasn't sure. So a lot of, a lot of them bought out. Looks like. I don't know often what the amount is. I don't have contract. <coughs> well, maybe they get the health care through, you know, their spouse, their spouse or something. Yeah, right. We have that a lot of work. In the computer assisted instruction section, which is like page 20 or five. <clears throat> um, page 20? Well, it says page 20, but then it also says five in the corner right there. Um, the uh, supplies non software and um, so that, that's uh, tech new equipment. Is this all related to remote instruction? That's line, line two, 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 yeah. 610, 2225, 5, Oh, yeah. Um, I'd have to find out what the supplies non-software is. I did actually ask at the um, school board meeting last night if they could find out what, if the tech new equipment was offset by the COVID grants, because we did use some of the COVID money to buy Chromebooks and other supplies uh, because of the number of students who were fully remote or partially remote hybrid. So what I'm not sure is if that 70,000 was offset by some of the COVID money. They just kind of move stuff to the other line or something. No, no, it's not that, not there. Sorry, I don't know. If the COVID money was included in the revenue, then I think the expenses would be included in this. Right. Well, yeah, that would be the correct thing to do. So, okay. Yeah, yeah it'd be good to know where they spent that COVID money. So we actually have a full. Um, we got that for next time. We have our spreadsheet of each allocation um, that it's been spot on. Were there like cases, the attorney and negotiator, legal services total? Which one? Oh, it's page 21. It's oh, I see. about five or six lines down. Were there more than anticipated lawsuits and things or? Not lawsuits. There was definitely more than anticipated legal issues because of COVID. So there was lots of um, constantly changing guidance and rules. Um, there was uh, some negotiations that happened with the teachers' unions and air unions around COVID conditions. Um, there was other legal matters. We had a New superintendent. Were we able to use COVID money for that? To offset that? <laughs> Which kind of is really unfortunate because that's right. truly that's a COVID Brian, thing. COVID's yeah. driving it. <clears throat> We're very restricted on yeah. yeah. Stupid government. I know. I think the um, SAU <clears throat> also separately incurred unusually expensive fees, but now I'm not aware of any other Whoa. Um, the telephones. That is something that we had looked at last year in the budget 
and I had asked about how they can rack up six thousand dollars in telephone, and then here it's eleven thousand. I believe I will confirm, but I believe oh, that sorry, nineteen thousand. We switched at the end of the year <clears throat> and over implemented over the summer uh, to a voice over IP system through I think Zoom. Actually, runs it, offers it, so that we won't be using regular landlines, but we are having a lot of problems. Um, anyone who's uh, got kids in the school would know, uh, but the phone line's going down and people couldn't yeah. call into the school, they couldn't call out. Um, and so that was one of the reasons for switching over. So I believe that that line includes the, the initial startup costs so that now it will be on the voice over IP. So that line should go down. Okay. Um, for so this is rolling in all the new equipment for VoIP stuff? Right, um, I'll double check to make sure that is it going to be substantially lower? Because I remember even when I had seen the 6,000 or 11,000, I had asked how many phone lines there were, and I had talked to people at the library, and the amounts that they were paying for phone service were significantly less than this. That's a lot for telephones. Yeah, I think it's because of the startup costs for the new system. Does the school have its own? Like um, phone server at this point? Oh, I'm sure. Or at least they used to. They did before. Yeah. But because I mean, if they're if you're running your own PBX box now, I mean, there should be almost no cost after the initial equipment. Yeah. Hopefully, it's just that one-time cost. The, we looked at a few different services. It was based on the number of users. <coughs> there is a, an annual licensing cost. I saw rubbish removal is also significantly over budget, and that was one of those blank things that had been budgeted quite a bit higher um, in last year's budget. And there was some talk about <clears throat> there was some talk about talking to the people at the community center here about their dumpster stuff because they had a better rate or something. Did anything ever get done with that? Can you tell me what line you're on. Um, page twenty-two. It's almost in the middle of the page. 01, 2620, 5421. Yeah, rubbish removal. Yeah. yeah. Negative 33%, which is a positive, right? It means it went over, over budget. budget. It was budgeted 13,000. They spent almost 18. And I remember that was something that was sticking out as a big increase last year when we went over the budget. There was talk about that doing some, some, some sort of cooperation with the, the dumpster service here or something like that. Mm. Would make sense, like a package deal, right, for a yeah. town, right? Yeah. We all bundle everything, right? Car insurance, home insurance, yeah. to get a better rate. That just would make sense. I agree with that. Mm. Yeah, I remember that last year. Carol, it's a shop around, too. Yeah. Carol, I'd like to just touch back to the telephones for a second. Because I wanted to touch on, because I would have thought that a lot of the, if it was new phone equipment, it would have been under the new equipment line, which is 2410-5731, which is also 133% over budget. Yeah, I'll have to ask. I, I don't you know, know it's, it, right, because there's a line for that. That should just be services stuff. was just bad at, you know, putting the wrong category. 
Yeah, I'm not so sure that there's a lot of actual equipment. I think there were sort of costs, but I don't know. Yeah, that's if they were rolled together, if it all got put into one more. Well, if they went from analog phones to have phones in every room or something? I believe so. Yeah, yeah then they would have to either get new VoIP phones or analog telephone adapters right. for every room. Right, but that would have been equipment then. Yeah, yeah. The so that's that a good equipment. question. Right. Is where that is. I guess what I'm looking for is, you know, what is going to be in next year's budget for telephone service, and hopefully it's lower. It's really hard to know what some of these things are when they just say new equipment and yeah. it's above, you know, replacement of equipment, mm -hmm. you know, that's... Equipment repairs. Right. It, yeah. It, we're just looking at numbers without any explanation. Um, Carol, if we could get this in Excel that we can actually manipulate it would be good for us for analysis for the I can do that for the budget I don't know if this is um, I mean I, I, we would can ask to get that done for the budget I don't know if this is easily dumpable into Excel and I don't know what, what good, I don't know how much you'll be able to do with it because it's not it doesn't necessarily roll over into the next budget anyway right well right but this is good for it if we can get this in Excel it's good for analysis to do the prepare Preparation for the next budget. I, I can ask. Yep. Okay, thanks. And of course, it doesn't not password protected. Otherwise, it's useless. And we might as well just stick to PDF. When you go down to the transportation lines, you'll see that there were savings um, in the elementary transportation and also the Dover, um, and that was because of. Um, Reduced buses, like there were no field trips, there was you know, there were no um, sports buses, those types of things. And then Dover was um, mostly fully remote um, for at least half of the year, and that was happening, so it was reduced cost. For me. Like the class field trip on the last page and stuff. So aside from, I see the, they're like athletic transportation is pretty mm -hmm. much all unspent, right. but in general, like the, the unspent funds for the end of the year is most of that is salaries and unfilled positions and things like that. I don't think there are salaries that are, did you see that? Oh, well, I mean, so, well, maybe it's not salary, but there's like, um, you know, health insurance buyouts and the tuition anticipated health insurance I don't know the, the question was you know at the last meeting we had wondered that there was unspent there was an unspent balance of I'm gonna 400,000 something like that at the end of the year and the question was just where was the, the unspent money 430 I believe yeah I didn't, I didn't. where are the savings is that what you're asking or, yeah where is the unspent money and I mean I know it's it's in these full files any of these percent budget at the end any of that that's positive is unspent money uh, so, I mean, but without being able to sort this I can't over a hundred thousand just on transportation that's why I was pointing that out yeah okay so if you look at the cap the subtotals and that's from 137 percent transportation and that's from reducing the number of buses oh not that's because of COVID that we yeah it's 
cool. <laughs> COVID, but aren't they still under a uh, contract though? The we buses don't pay and stuff for the like buses that. that aren't used. So Dover in particular, because they weren't in the school, they weren't running. School. They had previous year, the first. I'm just wondering the previous COVID. years, is there any extra money, you know, fiscal year 2019, 18, 17, can we see that? Just so we have a we don't roll over like the town does so it, um, whatever was left that wasn't and where does it go then after it's left goes to offset the tax rate well it goes into the unassigned fund balance and then they do warrant articles out of the unassigned okay. fund balance those are the ones that say there is no cost to the taxpayer where it says there is no additional tax it says this will well, cost zero but it's, it's well yeah you could say half true so what it is true right no yeah. additional it's tr it's True, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, the school is allowed to keep some amount of it in a fund, but the rest of it does. Wasn't there an emergency fund though? The school has in case you know things pop up. Yeah, that's the the amount of the unassigned fund balance that they're allowed to keep, and, and that's and what that's is that? I forget. Okay. It's not as big as the town. The town has a bigger amount. Yeah. So anything that was a encumbered was in this as well. So yeah, I'm not sure why they're still showing encumbered, or I guess because it was encumbered as of June 30th, um, and then those bills were paid over the summer, it doesn't update it. So like even um, part of the high school tuition, I don't know if that, I'm just happened to look at that line, had some that was still encumbered. So I think those bills were just, hadn't been paid yet. That's why it's still encumbered. Uh, but when it's the audited statements are done, there will be adjustments made if needed. These mm -hmm. aren't audited. Right. Well, right, of course not. But um, I, I don't have <clears throat> the old reports. You could go back and get the old reports, but again, that might yeah, they're probably, it's not retained. They're probably maybe in here so even, right? The right. might even be online annual report. Probably am. Yeah. You know, how to dig and see if it's, I'm just seeing, I'm just curious if there's a trend like or the not. Town, the town you know, if it's just COVID or if it's just a trend. Sure. The town is able all. to keep theirs and we, whatever's left after the Warren articles. Anything um, that happened last year is going to be an aberration in COVID. For sure. Well, and even the year before because the yes. school shut down in March. Mm, yeah. Right. Okay. So long ago. Did they stop doing lunch? Last year, the federal <coughs> government for last year and this year um, is um, made all public school lunches free. Free, so we right? Can't charge for them. Right. Unfortunately, my kid doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the government cheese. My grandfather used to get government cheese. That's good cheese, <laughs> and the butter. <laughs> Growing up, they had it on the news there a couple of weeks ago. Some of the lunches that would be served. I mean. Anybody would eat them. Oh, is that right? I, I didn't Not see really that. Around right around the country. Or because they tried to make them healthy. <laughs> yeah. No chocolate milk. Anybody else have any more questions? I know it's brief. Carol, thank you for answering our questions and yeah, thank you. listening to us tonight. Um, if there are no questions, do you have anything to go over for? I can just go over what happened at the last meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we just start out we, with our uh, you know, payroll and accounts payable um, manifest. And then we want our committees on the budget review, planning board, three hundred day anniversary, and CIP. So are you our official Board of Selectmen representative? I am. Okay. Now, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Chris just explained to us that the, the sale of the roof, prop, uh, roof floor property has been finalized. Um, uh, if you guys know that it's going to be uh, some sort of a, uh, industrial park. I mean, from what we've seen so far, it looks like it's going to be very nice, and uh, we know that the guy that uh, purchased it, he actually makes the, uh, the mask or sleep at the end of that. So I believe he's going to have one part that's going to be that. And he's got other plans for the other buildings as well, but so far, so good. And, uh, he's going Sounds to like excellent tax base. <coughs> What's that? 
It sounds like an excellent new tax base. Yeah, no, we have to win this space, man. Yeah. True, as long as they're not drilling for water, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, no water. No, if we're making apps, we No water, yeah. no town. I don't think anybody would. <laughs> that's uh, in progress, and, and we kind of can't wait to see uh, you know, what the next steps are. He's, he's already made plans to appear before the planning board, so anybody will hear much more in the coming months. Um, the highway department uh, out there uh, surveying, surveying and collecting info about some of the town roads. Um, Stratford uh, Regional Planning Commission is having a meeting with the town. A new land use clerk has been hired. The recycling center is back on winter hours. Uh, it's nine to five, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah, was there one or two people that two that left? Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Tyler? How how do we do on the sale of the property? <coughs> Pretty well. I mean, close to a million. So much better than some of the people who are trying to come in and you know, we just get it to them. I mean, they want it in the way back of like three hundred thousand. Such a good spot. I think a million. Oh yeah, commercial room four. Yeah, it's a bargain. Yeah, yeah that was it still is. a bargain. That was just yeah. We think we, we think we found the right person to that uh, respects you know the town issues. And, uh, well, it'll be good to have some commercial revenues come in to the town. That's right. important. Yeah, I look at some town people could probably even find employment over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do have um, 500 and back number 538,000, you know, from the uh, ARPA Act there, and um, you know we have to spend that by 2024. Put stipulations if you spend on COVID relief sort of things or infrastructure or to uh, you know first responders or whatever. So we're, we're in the uh, process of talking about that. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Personally, I think we got to use it for you know, some of the stuff that we need to do in town. Like roads? Yeah. Roads, maybe some culverts, more culverts. <coughs> we have a little bridge work to do. Mm -hmm. And again, we see if we can ask the taxpayer to pay for that. So. Right. Do you think that would replace the 300000 that they always ask for road maintenance, or probably not? Not sure. Yeah. yeah. You got your hands full on the roads, though. Yeah. You guys yeah. fight poor farm road. I go, boy, that's a battle. For 15 years, it's been a battle. Yeah. Right. And part of the problem is getting the work done in a schedule. Right. Yeah. So. No, that's, uh, I mean, I you said that I think the town and the crews have done a good job in placing some of the culverts in town you know, throughout the summer. And uh, you know, that's what we're, I think they're trying to find out too. Kind of an unknown thing. Uh, where are they? How many we have? How many are you know? Yeah. Mm. Didn't we have a we survey have that, of that? That survey should be going on now, yes. right? Oh, yes, yes. That's what it is. They're out there actually you know, we'll have it in a database that we can access and, That'd be nice. and start our you know maintenance for the next ten years. So, but that's what I hope that that money is will be used in things that like, again that we again. Like, you know, asking the taxpayer to pay for so it, will, it will do good for the taxpayer. Without, you know, yeah. Yeah. And then, but it's a 300 celebration of everybody. Mm -hmm. A schedule will come out soon. So, yeah, 
And I'll, like I said, after now that I'm coming to the meeting or whatever, I'll, I'll plan on getting you guys the minutes of the select board meeting. Oh, that'd be great. This meeting. Right. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Does anybody else have any questions for him? All right, so we will move on to the committee reports. That's all right with everybody. Um, Michael, do we have anything to report for the school facilities? Yeah, we uh, had a meeting today, as a matter of fact, and um, there was a and there was a subcommittee developed from the facilities committee that will deal with communications so that we'll have a, a, a core of people that, that uh, help um, spread information about what the project is and, and what it's going to cost and all of that as we get closer to, to um, essentially putting it on next spring's ballot. Um, Are you talking about an, the addition? Yes. Right. Does that include like doing mailers and stuff? Probably. I don't know what, what they're going to plan, but... Um, well, you guys did mailers last year, right? Yeah. How much, how much does that cost? Who pays for that? Well, the, the school board has a budget for, for, um, for postage and... and uh, like marketing and things yeah, like that? Yeah, it, it didn't... It wasn't a, a mailer... If I recall right, it wasn't a mailer specific to that project. It was included in what the school board is doing um, prior to... It was like a multi-page yeah, thing with yeah. the Warren articles and stuff. So, yeah, if it, exactly. so if it didn't have the stuff about the addition, then it could have been shorter and cost less, probably. Probably not. I'm just wondering how much taxpayer money is going to be spent trying to educate the public about the addition when the public's already voted on it and voted no. Right, but don't you think if we're going to go through this again that the public... Um, might need to know about it. Well, I think if you're going to go through it again and you're going to reduce the cost by 13%, the public's going to vote exactly the same way they did last time. I don't think that the problem was that the public didn't know enough about the school's needs or the cost of it because yeah. they knew the cost of it and they voted no. Job. You did a good job of like. <clears throat> I think there was a lot of communication about the needs. There was many presentations. There was mailers. There was online posts. There was a website created for it. There was Facebook stuff. Um, you couldn't miss it. Anyway, and the other subcommittee is specifically dealing with, with what we can do in the, the design of building. And there was a meeting uh, about that specific uh, thing <coughs> probably a week and a half ago. I don't know exactly when it was. Um, but it involved the, the architect and building and construction engineers. And um, they did come up with a, a revised... Um, plan that the and they uh, presented to the school board last night, and it um, it took away one of the the, um, the kindergarten classrooms from where it was, and that got moved. Um, it, it got moved to another another portion of the new build that that um, actually extends it. It uh, turns the, that whole classroom uh, 90 degrees so that it goes further out into the area of the roadway, but it's done in such a way that everything else got slid north and was able to um, allow much less road construction. Right. The, the, the road would, would not need to be. There would not need to be new. It's going to save a half a million dollars. Is the change the, the change that they made? And they, they did the they're, they're redesign. Yeah, no, they, they did a no redesign specifically to uh, prevent the the, co the the road cost, the, the cost of changing the road. A half a million for the road, or the, all the changes? No. Uh, all, all the the half a million, both half, the, around the road work and the excavation and all of that. The change, this change, everything about the change saves half a million dollars. So that would put us at five point six, roughly. Pardon? 5.6? 5. 5. No, I thought it was for inflation it was 7 million. So it would be 6.5. Right. They, they were hoping to be, they were hoping to drop that down to 6.1. So we best, case, best, case, 
Best case would be five six, right? right. I don't so, know what the new cost is because it it, it reduces the courtyard, it changes the layout, and they have to recost the projects. Okay. Right. okay. They look. <coughs> don't know yet. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. That makes is sense. Is the courtyard still part of it? Like that big opening <coughs> in the center? It's much smaller. It's, it's much smaller. smaller. Why not completely eliminate it? It's a very inefficient design. I think last time the argument was for window space in classrooms. It's not an argument. It's, it requires right. something. Right. Right, but that's if you use that space as classroom space. If you move some of the office space or the library spaces and use those, you don't have to meet it. And I think there was some sort of workaround for it. Anyway, the design Certainly has the all, older has gone back. It's, it, it, the architects are still working on the design to look at cost-saving things, what they can make smaller windows and other materials, everything, other things that they can do to generally reduce the cost. Okay. Sure. So that's what's going on right now. I think now. I, had, I had a question. I, I, I had asked, if, and I have never got an answer, but whether or not um, skylights or solar tubes could meet the, the lighting requirement, the natural lighting requirement, because you understand having a a big hole in the center of the building these are exterior walls they're far more expensive than interior walls you're now introducing you know a lot of cold air into there so you're having higher energy costs it's just a very inefficient design if the only reason to have it is to meet some sort of arbitrary there must be natural sunlight in a classroom rule so if it can be met with a you know a couple hundred dollar also, sonar to solar tubes it's also used as an educational space they're never used as an educational space everyone that's been in a school building that has a courtyard knows it just sits unused we discussed this last year at the meeting I, everyone pretty yeah, much agreed on that it sounds like we're going back to that but i'm giving yeah. you the same answer that, that that's right. the same answer that, that they have for right now because this is something that's in progress so we'll be able to talk about it at every meeting absolutely and the progress absolutely. that so that's, is this being is made. where we're at this is what they've done and at the end of the meeting today there the the, the the message was that they were going back to the architects to look at what else they could do with materials that they used that mm -hmm. did the windows need to be as large as they were et cetera, et cetera, to see what they could do but this was a big big step because it was not uh, a chunk of, of a few thousand dollars but a big chunk of money that they were able to save that may it may do nothing more than uh, cut back on what the inflation was but at least we're we're not getting it with it, it isn't going nothing's gone up yet right but you're going to go to the taxpayer with the same cost we don't know exactly we that. don't know that yet is so. there other options though remember yeah, show you mentioned <coughs> it i mean we like choices you know, I know. small I know medium do. grande yeah. you know that's Michael, just who did we they are talk about <laughs> any um they talked about situations they did they, like they talked about um, developing a a cost analysis to compare That'd be great. of of a, a modular build instead. I just um, and they went through that uh, last year during their their initial design and and um, got some of or got got that information available to the design team that says um, you know you're not going to save anything by doing that. Who gave the numbers I, for that? I would um I would. Since we're doing it every year, right? Like it didn't pass last year, but we're going to do it again. I don't remember any of that talk about modular no. or pricing out or anything. So. Well, that's because it was it was done during the during the the development phase, and we, as a as a committee, said that doesn't make sense to put all that money into something that's going to be a temporary structure. Um, well, and, this year, so would you be able to maybe suggest that they try to look at that again? I they are. I went and they looked. Are. I, they okay, are. I went and looked at it on my own. Um, I think it was like USA Modular, US something Modular, where they do a lot of different variety of modulars for different mm -hmm. things. Um, and I don't obviously, I'm not an architect, I'm not a builder, I don't know, but some Most of the things of I was looking at um, really looked really nice and looked really great and i know strafford just got um have you ever toured the modular factory before um i haven't i've no. toured three of them before what was going to buy a house it's very interesting they all had something pros and cons right if you right. add all the pros together it'd probably be a nice product two in new hampshire and one in maine actually yeah and i and i know strafford just got one for their school as well so i think you know having options yeah. I think would be nice yeah, for absolutely. the taxpayers yeah. yeah did you guys get quotes from modular places because I'm sure the salespeople at the modulars they'll Have give you a free file. quote and everything oh, yeah. because it sounded to that's, me that's like you had gotten 
that is what's going on. They are <coughs> revisiting that, that program. Right, when you say that, but and, have you... And checking the... Are they prices. contacting actual modular salespeople? Yes, yes. Okay. They, they need to be updating the prices and all of that. Much of the cost of modulars is the pad that it sits on. Right. And that's, that's permanent, though. So that's when you talk about right. these are a temporary structure, you can't count the site work, which is the, the much of the cost. You can't count that as temporary because if the modular only lasts 20 years, we can knock the modular down and put another one on that pad site. So you can't, you can't on one hand, criticize it as a temporary solution, and then on the other hand, say, well, you know, the modular, is, it's the, all this site work. The site work is permanent. Right. People live in modules. Yeah. 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 I, and it depends, too, <coughs> if they plan it so that the modulars don't impact with the space that they want to actually do an addition because then you're paying for things twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they are, they are right. experiencing that. They, if they went with a modular plan, it would be in the same footprint as the and that's, area that's, that's being designed right now. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there aren't options. For that. <coughs> I hate we don't have just acres that, and acres of buildable land. No, yeah, I know. And There's that. acres and acres of property there, but it's all wet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So, anyway, Thank there's you. there's a, a meeting with the architects and, and, um, and um, construction people probably later this month. Uh, we are getting together as a full facilities committee on the 5th of November. Uh, excuse me, 4th of November, Thursday, um, to see what came of, of the architect's um, <coughs> new design and costing, and we'll see where it goes from there. Awesome. Thank you. Is so there much. an estimate for how much the school is spending on the redesign efforts and the architects to do the redesign? I haven't heard it. I don't know. Do you have a ballpark no. estimate? Do you, do you are, we, are we paying them or are they doing it for free as part of what we've already paid them? I don't know that. Um, I don't either. Maybe they can ask next time. Right, Carol. Can you ask you? All right, so Carol, you don't know. Uh, my recollection is something like up to ten thousand. I don't know how much each iteration costs, but mm -hmm. I can find out. We need to get an estimate. For it. Right. But right. I don't think we have a because of the cost of each time you do it. We talked about this last night that we looked at the design before having them cost it because we can't do 10 iterations. We need to, each time we do it, it costs money. Right. A quick, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Quick question, just want to rewind a little bit. Um, what is the school max capacity? I mean, how many students can it hold? How many students are in there? Was it 484? What's what's in there now? 600, right? 600. See, know. that's why I, I need facts. Okay. I hate no. to guess. People get really hung up on, <laughs> I know. on that particular metric. Right. Uh, well, it's got to be but, safe. Even the fire marshal would maybe right, know. Right. But, right. But, but, but the reality of how, how education is going today does not match with the size of the classroom that was built in 1995. Okay. True. Well, and, and the like I, agree, I agree with you. It is. Difference it's through technology. Change. I mean, I, I, I love it. I wish I had this when I was growing up, right. right? I learned how to do stuff in a car. I'll tell you what socket to use and torque settings and everything else, right? How to videos, right? Corporations like mine, over 23 years, we fly people around the world, you know what I mean? From, from Japan and, and Hawaii, right? We all train. You know, go to training, you got hotel room, breakfast, lunch, dinner, right? We all, you know, get together and break out groups, right? Now, we did it this year, you know, COVID, and it's just saving so much money, time, carbon footprint, whatever, you, whatever, you know what I mean, whatever the pros and cons are, you know? But I do agree with you, we are learning differently, but we're doing breakout groups right online. I'm not waking up four in the morning, driving to the airport, getting on a plane, flying here, coming home right. it, it's definitely I agree with you we're definitely learning it differently right it would be a lot cheaper so to teach. I'm just wondering what is the safe capacity do we need it I mean you also have to think about there's certain mandates coming too. West Coast is doing it a lot of you know I'm not going to get into it but it, I don't know if, is a enrollment going to increase or decrease based on certain mandates if they would come or if they wouldn't come I'm not sure it's just something to keep in mind it'd probably be a lot cheaper to teach remote all the time yeah 
it doesn't work. <laughs> for <laughs> some of the students. I'm not a teacher. So. There, there, should be a, there should be a standard that we could refer to to find out how many students that that place will be. Right. I, I mean, but you, you, have to, you have to come up with some number. No, there is. There is. And we've talked about it before number. in like last year's meeting as well. I think, uh, I don't know numbers off the top of my head, but it can hold somewhere near like, I'm probably going to say like five, uh, higher 500s, right? And we're not at that enrollment. Right. I mean, if right we're now, close, I get it. But there's because you know, of I mean, COVID urgency, and But if we're not like close, that, I mean, I mean they're talking about the, the location have, for yeah. the SAU transitioning to town hall, right? That's already paid. School's paid. Property site work's already done, right? You hear lumber prices. The structure's already built. I mean, weren't they doing, um, didn't they have a daycare out of that building before? At which building? Which one? The old, the town, old town hall. The old town hall. Yeah, aftercare was there. Now, would you move students into that, like kindergarten or something? Is that an option so if you're getting overcrowded, or am I? The old town hall is not currently usable. Right. Right. I mean, but is it going to take five million to update the town hall? I'm I'm just throwing options sure. out there. I'm not saying this or that. Right. right? I'm just trying to think outside the Brainstorm. box. Another interesting idea with that would be if they're going to revamp one of these buildings like the old town hall and they're going to put offices in there for the SAU people, maybe there are some people that work in the school building right now in offices that could be moved over there as well. And then those offices could be used for this one-on-one -on -one instruction space right. that's always like being said, complained about. Most of the majority of the money's already spent, right? Properties paid, site work's done, structures built. Right, it's just it needs some hopefully a lot of probably TLC. So the I old hear. town hall is little. I mean that that space is basically it's going to be tight to put five people in it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Unless you carve up the big open room. Right. 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 There's the big. How open did they room. put daycare in there? They just had five. Well, there's a big. There's a big open room. Okay. That's, um, I don't know what size. I'm like Not much trying to compare. This room. It's definitely. I'd say it's probably Taller twice suit. as big as this room. Taller suit and makes it look that big. It has the stage. Too. Right. It's got a stage. It's a stage. It's basically an open space. It's just, and part of renovating it w would be just where the old offices were really mostly um, okay. could provide office space and keep that other space as open space for. Um, it could be like meetings during the day, um, but also available in evenings for um, line dancing, for say, you know, Boy Scouts. Say, or Boy Scouts or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, and if we started getting into cutting that up, you know, then it's big, a complete renovation that we weren't actually looking at. <laughs> so anyway, it sounds it sounds like. All right, I can give my report. Now. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> we transition. Yeah. We transition to nice. Take it away, John. Um, nice. <laughs> all right, so we met Tuesday night, um, and most of the meeting we focused on um, the organization chart and you know for doing roles and what we could combine uh, because there's a lot of things that are part time. Um, and, and kind of putting estimated costs with that. Um, a lot of that stuff's actually got to go back to the school board to kind of, they're, they're the ones ultimately responsible to make these decisions and hirings. But that's kind of where we were at. Is there anything, anything else to add, Karen? We talked about facilities again. Right, so we did talk about, we touched on facilities as the well. Big, right? when, in my view, right. the biggest decision point because um, I think the org chart and the personnel was pretty well uh, agreed upon in terms of what right. the recommendations are. Part of the facility stuff we're waiting to hear back on some <coughs> numbers. So the so. town actually is getting cost estimates for the old town hall yep. that we're waiting on. Yeah. I'm back. The old yeah. buildings. I mean, Dangerous. it costs money to fix that stuff. <coughs> That's we have a rough, like, back of the <coughs> estimate for the community room, just based on. Right, we have. <laughs> yeah, we got a, we got a couple, a couple rough estimates. All right, but if it's long term, you know, I mean, it's going to save you money down the road and investment today. You know, I mean, that's such a smart thinking. You know. And it keeps our town using the mm -hmm. same buildings that right. were here a long time Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. 
great. Right, right. You can yeah. keep it up and plus use it and, you know, over the time. What are we saving, 15000 a year bringing the SAU or something in here from Northwood we're, we're, we're paying? We're probably going to save around 100000 a year. 100000 so That's, that could be as put long into as we our don't town. overspend on building. <laughs> right, spend it before we get it. As right. I get it. But, uh, yeah. And I think there would also be savings by bringing the preschool into town, right, which right. But that's, now we're going to have to pay Northwood, um, which we are this year, paying Northwood to run that program for us. And that's a preschool. whole different committee, right? No, but, the preschool is, the, the facilities is the big driver of that. Oh, right. So if but we the, can get the facilities to have a preschool room, we can bring preschool into the... Yes. And what's the saving on preschool a year then? What are we paying Northwood? So the preschool cost is rolled into the SAU cost. I don't think it shows as a separate line. But I'm not I think we're paying over two hundred thousand. Yeah, it's it's pretty expensive. Yeah, that's pretty expensive. They're pretty cramped in those two rooms they have there. They're hmm. smaller than normal classroom size. Yeah, I think the two. I How think many the two students is that? I think the two classrooms for preschool are smaller than this one room. Is that based on number of students? So I think the arrangement with Northwood now, because Stratford is not part of it anymore, they haven't been for two years, is, um, I don't know that it's a per student, I think it's splitting the cost of running the overall program with Northwood, I don't think it's a per student. Cost. So I when they pulled out, the, our rate, our prices go up then, basically? Well, that's why our second cost went Yeah, I think, I think there was a change after Stratford left. Yeah, it might be. I, I'm just trying to go by memory. Okay. But I think it's like 200 then. Does anybody use this room during the day? During the day? If you just have a bookkeeper, this would be a great office. You just sit in here and get the whole room to yourself. <laughs> Little partitions. I, no. I'm sure it gets used for some things during the day, but not. It's probably not 100% used. You know, it's like it's a conference room. So yeah. You know. I mean, you just have a couple filing cabinets in the corner. People keep their papers. I mean, if all you're doing is working on a computer Decent or a quiet. laptop, it's quiet. It's spacious. You just got to get out before the meetings start at night. <laughs> All right. You can't work late. Yeah, no overtime for you. Um, capital improvement plan, we're meeting next week. I don't remember exactly what date because I didn't write it down. Um, but I've been in contact with um, uh, John Mornin for the capital improvement plan. So Is that with the school too or just the town? I think it's just with the town. Okay, because mm -hmm. we started talking about it, but we need to update ours. Because the, they should be at least have a representative there they normally would but and i would be the representative there for that meeting. no no oh, for the school. school we have a, a cip person okay uh, yeah but we need time to update ours we just went over it last night okay because it's supposed to be the the whole town okay so, I, I, you're not the <laughs> no, chair i don't think no um transportation committee tom isn't here um, i can update just we uh okay are going to put both the regular transportation contract and the special ed transportation contract out to bid because um, the special ed expires end of this year and the regular one would have expired last year and we just did a one year extension. Okay. So they'll both go out, out to bid and it's um, that, a long time. So. That actually may play in our favor. Mm -hmm. Probably not. <laughs> no, that, that's tough school bus drivers. They get the National Guard in mass right now, right? It's a guaranteed price increase. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, I meant yeah. between the two, having both it's contracts. Two different, I, uh, two different services. So mm -hmm. unless, unless the special ed one wants to bid on the regular one, I don't think it will help mm -hmm. us. Unless just somebody decides to bid on both together. Yeah, I mean, you can hope. Cross your fingers. Can always buy our own buses. That'd be nice. Find drivers then. Yeah, I know. It's a whole nother problem. <laughs> right. All right. Does anybody else have any um, questions or parting thoughts? We're getting ahead, so that's good. It's 8.06. Do you want to uh, talk about the uh, schedule? Next yeah. meeting is, what, November 4th? Yes. I think. So uh, in terms of the default and regular budgets, um, and talking to the superintendent, it 
from um, a kind of a time management perspective and for this committee to review it, it doesn't make sense for the school to do the default first because the special ed costs and contracted services um, have to be updated in the default and we won't have like solid numbers, I don't think, earlier on to be able to do the default early in November. Like it, it actually makes more sense because otherwise you're just gonna look at it extra times. Okay. It's gonna change. Um, so for us, it makes more sense to do the proposed first and then the default. So just do the proposed part of, so the stuff that's actually, um, it, you have control over basically, the non-contract things. The town, it might make sense to do default first because they don't have as many of those variable costs um, as we do. But <coughs> it doesn't really matter, it's just, Basically, when we look at those, they're going to match ba on both budgets, really, right? Those numbers, will yeah. They'll just match no matter what. Um, and I know that the, it seems like the school's more comfortable doing that. Doesn't really matter. No. Um, yeah, so our next bud our next meeting is going to be November 4th. Um, I'm just finalizing the schedule. Um, so as soon as I get it finalized, I'll send it out to everybody to take a look at so you guys can reserve your dates and I'll send it to you, Carol and Lorraine. Um, and if there's anything we need to move around, I mean, then we'll move it as long as it's within the time limits of what the state gives us. So the important dates for the state are uh, the last day for petition warrant articles is January 11th. Yeah, and this will be all on the email that I send out as well. And that um, basically means we can't have a public hearing before that day. I mean, if we did, we were subject to having a second one mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if something comes in. So, because the deadline is at close of business on the, on the 11th, 11th, we can have a hearing. On so the 13th. we're 13th. We can have a hearing on the 11th, like we talked about okay. um, last time. Mm -hmm. We could have a other hearing on the 13th, which was the third. So it was a Tuesday, Thursday that week. You mm -hmm. could potentially do the school on the 11th because we don't usually have petition. Yeah. That would work out. Okay, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we just have the two days. It didn't matter mm -hmm. which one was which. Yeah, that's what we talked about. All right, so I'll put you guys down for and the 11th. And the Tuesday, the 18th, which is the last day to have the public hearing, would be the snow day. Mm -hmm. for if either one of those got snowed, hopefully they both don't get snowed. Oh, uh, yeah. Does <laughs> it still snow? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope it I hope snows. So. It's all flush. I'm planning on it snowing. Mm -hmm. um, CIP member list is updated, but it does say that. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I remember seeing that somewhere. Is that on the school board website or which? It's website? on the town. It's on town. I think yeah. that's out of date. I yeah, think. I mean, um, was that last year? I think it's Michelle. Michelle. Mm -hmm. I don't have service on my phone, or I'd pull up who was on the email. I have. What do you want to look at? I can oh, look at oh, my email. Right oh, your email my specifically. Email. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so then I'd be able to tell you who was website. on the email for the CIP. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Megan Sebasco. And then, so the town and the school would have to come up with their uh, deliberative dates no earlier than the 5th of February. And between the 5th and the 12th. That's yeah. so. School and town, right? School and town need to kind of figure that out themselves. And then let us know and we'll add it to the schedule. Right. Probably a Tuesday and a Thursday. Yeah, although I think one of them did a Saturday last year. Oh, that's right. I did see that. 
Okay, so November 4th is when we're going to be meeting next. Does anybody else have any questions or concerns, anything, before we wrap it up? Are you going to take any names for budget committee? Oh, you can yeah. have people submit a letter, and what's the open date to? Yeah. Well, might as well just take care of it at the next meeting if people apply, because that gives a month for people to apply and everything. We can right. po if, we post it. Paper out. We post it to the website. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends, neighbors, whatever. People of Nottingham. People of Nottingham. So is it they'll just fulfill this year's term because he was on yeah. a three-year term and he just did one. Right, so it fulfilled this year's term till March. Till March, okay. right. A two year spot. I'm sorry? It'll be a two year spot because you only did one right. year. Right, no, no, no. So there would be one year after this. Yeah, yeah. So he would fulfill, he already did one year. He would fulfill, we would nominate a person oh, right, for right. one year. Right. Yes. And then right. next year there will be a one yeah. year opening. All right, so if anybody's interested in just doing a one year term. So it's a one-year term that we're looking for? Yes, ma'am. Not yeah. even a year. It's, it's really yeah, six months. Most yeah. of a year. Half year. <laughs> right. we well, this one year budget they, season. Yeah, yeah budget they season. They finish this budget season, and then they do next budget season, too? Oh, yeah. No, we would vote. They run for the election. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that seat would only be for one year. Right. Correct. So. All good? You, on the sheet, you can put that people should come. Yes, ex exactly. Right. Come to the next meeting, introduce yourself, tell us about yourself, whatever. And we'll vote. All right, sounds good. Does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. A second. Great. Aye. Aye. Oh, all okay. <laughs> <All> favor. <laughs> That done ahead of time. I know. Nice and short. Yes. <laughs>